Hello everyone and welcome back to Harvesting Spiritual Nuggets. Uh, today we're going to bring a salvation story from Ruth D. in West Virginia. Ruth will be 83 in July. So she's had the experience of seeing a lot of changes in the world and so... You know, I'm just grateful that uh, she's going to allow us to bring her story to light. So let's begin with that. She writes, When I was 10 years old, my grandmother passed away. She was a very good Christian woman, and she had lived with us all my life. I called her mommy and my mother, mother, because my grandmother was always there while my mother had to work. She was the one who took me to church. We always went to church near wherever we lived, and we moved a lot. So no matter what was over the door, so long as they preached Jesus born, crucified, and resurrected, we went. She taught me that Jesus was the most important person in my life, and if I wanted to go to heaven, I had to love him, and he always had to be first in my life. When she passed away and the preacher at her service said she was with Jesus in heaven, I told him I wanted to go to heaven too. He then told me what I needed to do. Just like my grandmother had said to me, I did it and I am still on the Jesus road today. Wow. Again, another impacting testimony as we see someone's experience to coming to Christ. And I thank you, Ruth, for bringing this story to us and letting us have a glimpse of how you were brought to Jesus. How amazing that is. And you know, I, I, I think here we can see how important it is to tell all those close to us that we need to love Jesus. And put and, and and we have to put him first in our lives. Um, many will struggle with this because, as with myself, we aren't sat down and explained why he needs to be first in our life, or why we need to be in love with him. Uh, let's think about that. Uh, do we do it out of fear? Yes, I've heard my own pastor talk about that's how he first came um, and, and, and um, why he came. Do we do it out of salvation? Definitely. Um, you know, Christ laid his life down willingly to give us that ability to grasp salvation. Um, do we do it for heaven? Mm, yes. All the beautiful, wonderful, and amazing things we've heard about heaven. Well, of course we do. Who wouldn't want that picture that we hear all the time? Do we do it for the forgiveness? Yes. <laughs> I think uh, we all need to uh, and desire to have all the 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 guilt that we carry removed from us uh, through the saving uh, forgiveness of Jesus Christ. How amazing is that? But I think all those things eventually fall away as the top reasons. We begin to understand that Jesus is the measurement, uh, the, the standard, the example by which every other plan, idea, course of action falls under and originates because of him and we begin to understand that we are we are raised to to new experiences new 
perceptions, new realizations, and aliveness. We have been um, feeding on information, um, limited information, uh, invalid truths, imprisoned hearts. Jesus comes and opens our eyes, our hearts, our minds to sacrificial love, absolute truths, unlimited possibilities. <laughs> Finally, I say all that to bring us back to why he needs to be first in our life and, and first for our love. We finally figure out, with all that new gained knowledge and, and, and awareness, uh, we figure out, as the relationship grows, that Jesus is the missing piece in an unfulfilled life. He is the connection that brings our completeness. He is our root that grounds us. He is God Almighty revealed. And that is just a powerful truth. And, and once we experience what he does to make us whole, everything else becomes secondary. I love him. I need him. I want him. And I don't care who knows or what they think. So when I say everything else becomes secondary, next in order, not less important, uh, not inferior, not runner-up, but in order as in harmony, um, uniformity established, um, Jesus brings us out of the darkness of subjection, manipulation, and domination into the light of perfection, certainty, and infallibility. And, you know, I've heard it uh, all of my years as a Christian now. It's all about Him. And it is. There's nothing out there that doesn't originate from Him. There's nothing out there that's, that's new that He hasn't provided. He, he's the reason for everything. It just requires my love. He requires my love for who he is. And I love him and I thank him for that. Thank you, Ruth, for <laughs> uh, your wonderful story that has brought all of that out of me. Um, I'm so thankful to you and I appreciate um, being able to do this story. Uh, I've known Ruth for for the uh, 14 years that I've been a Christian um, the church that I walked into that day um, Ruth and her husband Frank were a part of so thank you Ruth uh, I really appreciate being able to do this and bring your story I thank you all for your support for your love yeah uh, until the next time, have a blessed day.